Coming up on episode 22 of Skywalking, Skywalking Through, Through Neverland. Neverland. Let it flow. Let it flow. <laughs> I'm very impressed because usually you can't carry a gun. <laughs> and it's Jedi Tink. And it was that first perfect storm of Disney and Star Wars together. Average intelligence, what exactly your show is all about. Nate and I uh, call ourselves the bastard children of pop culture mama media. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Baby Jesus, listen. A billion years in the making. Welcome to Neverland. What do you know? <laughs> You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll kiss three bucks goodbye. <laughs> and we're going to record this episode with the doors wide open because spring is here. Sorry, all you East Coasters who are buried in the snow. Yeah. What what temperature is it out right now? Um, We're like, like in the mid-80s. <laughs> we are. It's like, oh, let's take off that huge comforter off the bed. But, you know, the birds are chirping outside, and it just, it sounds like spring out there. The dogs are barking. Whenever, <laughs> and barking and barking. And whenever I feel this kind of weather, it always puts me in the minds of those springs that a new Star Wars movie is going to open, and all of a sudden all magazines are full of Star Wars goodies, and this time of year puts me in a Star Wars frame of mind. Oh, speaking of you, you guys, this is Richard. Hey, hey, hey. And this is my sweetie wife, Sarah. Hi, everyone, also known as Jedi Tink. We got a lot of fun stuff coming up on this episode. Of Skywalking Through Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the ultimate expression of fandom. It's available on iTunes, YouTube, our website, skywalkingthroughneverland.com, and Stitcher Radio. Coming up on this episode of Skywalking Through Neverland, we talk to Gary Oransky. Gary co-hosts a podcast called Average Intelligence which is a podcast that covers all things pop culture and the first podcast we have ever been on. That's right. Like a year and a half and, ago, I think. And then we got the bug. <laughs> had the podcast, had a podcast. We were hooked. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Yeah. Also, we're going to talk about the Frozen DVD, which comes out March the 18th. But a day before that is March 17th, the season premiere of... Dancing, Dancing with, with the, the Stars. stars. <laughs> if you're a fan of the show, then you'll understand that reference. That's how Tom Bergeron always opens up the show. Yes. And on light speed to Main Street in this podcast, we are going to talk about some Disney Parks news on both the East and the West Coast. And we'll also have the countdowns to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim and Episode 7. As well as what did we start last week? Star Wars Weekends. There's some news about Star Wars Weekends that we're going to cover and just a bit for better or for worse. Last week, we interviewed Chris Strompolis of the Raiders guys, who were just finishing up their Kickstarter campaign, and we are happy to report that they reached their goal. All right, Chris and the gang. How, yeah. much, how much did they raise? They raised $58,273. Wow. And they were just looking for $50,000. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Yes. So they made like 8000 beyond their goal. It's amazing. And actually, they, they plan to continue asking for donations because their actual goal is 125000 I think, to make the scene super spectacular, apparently. So you can still, you can still contribute on their new website, RaidersGuys.com. If that were me, I would spend that extra money on craft service. <laughs> a well-fed crew is a happy crew. And a well-fed German mechanic is one that doesn't really mind doing take after take with his head getting split open by an airplane propeller. Ew. I remember that scene still. I don't think I've ever actually seen it because I always cover my eyes. <laughs> it's not what you see. It's what you don't see. Oh, hey, for those Star Wars fans out there who, who get the insider, issue 148, the one with the stormtroopers on it, if you flip to page 94, you're going to see... You're going to see what your co-hosts look like. <laughs> there, Well, there's well, me and with a... Picture, I guess what Richard looks like. <laughs> picture of me getting my Star Wars poster autographed by Harrison Ford. Woo! It was a picture taken by you. It's in the Bounty Hunter section with the caption, Fun with Ford. And there's a brief description of that day that we had met Harrison Ford at the screening of 42. Oh. So go and get Star Wars Insider issue 148, or you may get it digitally. 
That way you can just download it or upload it. So this Monday, March 17th, the day that this podcast premieres, is the day that you're going to also be watching Dancing with the Stars. And Lando premiere. No, no, Slando. Slando. Team Slando. Team Slando. Woohoo. That's Lando Calrissian and Emma Slater, his partner. Yeah, although she may not be his partner for long. They're going to do some kind of mixing and matching throughout the season. Yeah, this is totally new for those who don't watch Dancing with the Stars. Usually your partner is your partner throughout the whole thing. You form this big bond, but this time they're changing it up and... Somehow we're going to get to vote on who gets what partners somewhere in the season. But but seriously, you've got to vote for Billy D. Williams this whole season yes. because he's up against these Olympians who've just come off getting a, a gold medal. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> Billy D's in his 60s. Ice dancers. Yeah, and a whole. And I think everyone else is a swimmer or a arm wrestler or something. <laughs> well, we'll see, and we'll definitely be recapping the episode, or at least... Team Slando on our next podcast. Not that we endorse cheating, but you don't have to watch the episode. If you don't want to, you can always go on to the Dancing with the Stars website and just vote for Lando Calrissian. Yes. And then the next day on March 18th, Frozen comes out on DVD. And Blu-ray. And, and Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Who, who of you has pre-ordered it from Disney Store and got their lithographs? And we saw this back in in November. I I can't wait to see it again. Me too. I'm I'm excited. Because you were so caught up in the moment when seeing it for the first time in the theater. Yeah. Last uh, Thanksgiving. I know. Partly when I see movies like that that are so just beautiful to look at, I get caught up in the scenery and the beauty of it, and I forget to kind of take hold of the story in my head. So I get a little lost. Now the Blu-ray has got a whole bunch of special features, and well. Uh, there's a lack of special features on this. Oh, really? Which which means that in two more months, there'll be a special, <laughs> special edition of the Frozen DVD. Oh. <laughs> so you'll need to buy it again for the other footage they'll put on there. Now, right. on this Blu-ray and digital edition, there will be, of course, the making of Frozen. Okay. Another special feature, Defrosted, Disney's journey from Hans Christian Andersen to Frozen. That's a very cute title. Yeah, very catchy. That's also on Blu-ray and digital. Okay. And four deleted scenes with introduction by directors Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee. Wow. How how do they have deleted scenes from an animated film? Maybe, they... maybe they'd screened it yeah, and the scenes just didn't out. go anywhere. Well, I think for these four deleted scenes in an animated movie, we're going to see sketches and storyboards. Moving uh, storyboards. Never, they could have had the whole film done and then just realized these, film, the, these scenes just don't help the story flow. Possibly. Let it flow. Let it flow. <laughs> that was pretty good, actually, sweetie. I'm very impressed because usually you can't carry a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? That's my favorite song by Adele Nazim. <laughs> Great song, Adele. Great song. And the short film that preceded it in the theater, Get a Horse, will oh. also be included on there. That's the uh, Oscar winning Yeah. Short oh, yeah. Film? That, I just won an Oscar a couple of we- uh, last week, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Also... The Let It Go music videos by Demi Lovato, Martina Stoisel, and Marsha Milan London. Wait a minute. Where does Adele Nazim fit in there? Um, she doesn't get one. Adina <laughs> Menzel must be really upset that this Adele Nazim is getting more attention than she is right now. <laughs> oh. oh, but and one more thing. The Frozen <gasps> teaser trailer. What, what's the point of that? For the Disney files who want everything. I guess. Uh, for the for the Star Wars DVDs, I love all the teaser trailers. So you're not so pleased with these bonus features? Well, there could be more of them. Really, a DVD is not complete without bloopers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, it needs a blooper reel. Like in, in Toy Story mm-hmm. or the Pixar well, films, they'll have say, the yeah. animated The bloopers. Pixar films have great blooper reels that they actually animated just for that purpose. Yeah, I just some be behind the scene goofs of all the voice actors would be fun. Yeah. So for me, I know it's hard on a on a Blu-ray or on a DVD to have bloopers, but I want me some bloopers. Well, would you take a blog post? Actually a, a series of blog posts. That was a nice transition. <laughs> So if you get the Blu-ray and, like Richard, you're a little disappointed in the amount of bonus features, you can go to adventuresbydaddy.com and they have a great three-blog series with all this behind-the-scenes info. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, so why is it on Adventures by Daddy and not on the Frozen DVD? 
Well, Disney Studios invited a bunch of bloggers to the studios to actually screen the film again and then go behind the scenes, like into the Walt Disney Animation Studios. Wow. Yeah. So they got to chat with directors and producers of Frozen. Adventures by Daddy gets invited to a lot of stuff, so I'm sure they're going to have a lot of great insight to this. They have a three-blog series on their trip to Walt Disney Studios for Frozen. And the first one is all about their chat with the directors and producers of Frozen, which one of the things, I'll just pull one thing from there that I found interesting. Um, It took five years for them to develop and animate the film. And while they were writing it, their whole goal throughout the time was to redefine true love. It just took them five years to redefine love? You would think that would take a lifetime. Well, they're they're starting the process. I'm just a hopeless romantic. Yes, you are. (laughs) Now, the second blog in the series talks about how art directors and lighting artists went to the Ice Hotel in Canada, and they went to Norway to study light and dark on snow and ice. There's an ice hotel? Yes. In fact, there's pictures of it on the blog, and it looks totally cool. But I don't know how you'd be comfortable sleeping there. (laughs) It's like a bed made of ice. Can you bring your own portable heater? And what I'm kind of sh- damage would that cause? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, at first when you said that, I was all, I was all excited. I, I was in. Uh-huh. Not so much anymore. Not for sleeping? No. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. The, the art directors and lighting artists, that was actually a point in blog number one. Now, blog number two, they got to go into the Walt Disney Animation Studio and see how the movie was animated with, like, riggers and things. And they got to animate... Olaf. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. And then blog number three talks about uh, the voiceover process. That's what I want to see. Yeah, he actually got to voice over um, something, voice over a scene, (laughs) ADR. Nice. That's additional dialogue recording. Just go to adventuresbydaddy.com and search Frozen and it'll pop right up, this three blog series. Prepare to make the jump to light speed. Lightspeed to Main Street. I wanted to go over a few things that's happening in the Disney parks this week. How's that sound? Awesome. Everything is awesome. (laughs) That was last week's episode, (laughs) Richard. So what is happening at the Disney parks this week? Well, first of all, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened to annual pass holder previews on March 13th. Unfortunately, our schedules didn't allow us to go and take advantage of this. Ah, no... No. What did they add to Big Thunder Mountain? Well, apparently, uh, they added, well, Rainbow Ridge, which is the Thunder Mountain town. It was completely. Wait a minute, that's the bridge going over to Asgard. What's that doing no, at Big th- Thunder Mountain? That's the Rainbow Bridge. That's I'm what talking you said. about Rainbow Ridge. Oh, details, details. <laughs> they all own each other anyway. Well, it's, it's true. Bound to mash up at some point. Yes. But the Thunder Mountain town was completely rebuilt from scratch and, of course, weathered to look old. But now the foundations aren't creaking or anything. So they re- completely rebuilt it from scratch. They made the tracks like OSHA compatible and smoother, details, actually. Details. Which, I don't know about the smoother part, because uh, part of the appeal for me on Thunder Mountain was that it was kind of jerky. I thought that was part of it. Was that just because it was old and hadn't been maintained in a while? Well, no, but remember, like, a couple times people have been killed on Thunder Mountain? (laughs) (laughs) I know. So, they redid the track. Ixnay, (laughs) Ixnay. No, no one was killed. Thank you. That was over at Universal. (laughs) Not at Disney. Yes. Because it's the happiest place on earth. (laughs) Apparently, there's a new surprise of this attraction, like towards the end. But I didn't want to read. You walk out alive? Yeah. Oh, shut up. (laughs) I didn't want to read what it was because I want to be surprised when we finally go on it. But it reopens officially to the public on March 17th. So a lot of things happen on March 17th this year, including St. Patrick's Day. So I have a tip for people who are going to the Disney parks anytime starting now through graduation. If you see graduation Mickey ears and you want a pair for eventual graduation in June, do not wait. If if you want them, if you're graduating this year, just get them now. Get them when you see them because they sell out. Point taken. So it's not often that a Disney parade debuts because they usually keep them around for several years. It's called the Festival of Fantasy Parade. 
and it features it's kind of got a little steampunk thing going on. Look at that dragon. We're looking at the Adventures by Daddy website. Mm -hmm. There's a big steampunk dragon. That looks awesome. It's maleficent as a dragon, and it breathes real fire. And actually, if you go to that website, you can see a full parade run through. And uh, they have characters. They have Rapunzel. They're going to have the Little Mermaid, Peter Pan, Brave. And most of these characters we're looking at look look like they came right from Hunger Games. (laughs) They do, kind of. And uh, Mickey's airship. Wow, this is like steampunk inspired. Holy buckets. Anyway, this looks really cool. So if you want to know what's happening at Disney World and Disneyland, go to adventuresbydaddy.com. Well, now we're going to take a detour from Main Street and go light speed to Hogwarts. Now, we were just over at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Last week, was it? Two weeks ago, was it? Two weeks ago. (sighs) Yeah. Anyway, it was really fun going on some of these roller coasters at Wizarding World of Harry Potter Because we got the chance to look over the fence into the new Harry Potter attractions. Including the Hogwarts Express, which is really all we could see. Well, Uh, actually what we saw was a bunch of construction uh, workers. Yeah, a bunch (laughs) of construction. (laughs) Moving around dirt. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) But it it was still cool. And uh, actually today, which is Friday, um, Universal released new details about the Hogwarts Express journey. That people will be taking. Yeah, first of all, if you've never been to Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Islands of Adventure at Universal Studios, you gotta go. Yeah, it's so immersive. It's like walking into the Harry Potter films. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're there, get butterbeer. Yes, and pumpkin juice. Oh my goodness. Mm, But but get the frozen butterbeer. But just know that it's very addicting. (laughs) Yeah, Richard, I think you had like three throughout the day. I had three, but... We were just there with, with Dave Scale, and he had about 15. <laughs> yes, they're that addicting. <laughs> they are. Well, I wanted to tell you, uh, they released new details about the Hogwarts Express. And now, the, this is the train that will take you between London at Universal Studios and Hogsmeade at Islands of Adventure. And you do need a park-to-park ticket to ride on this train. So, unfortunately, next time we go, Richard, um, we're going to have to fork over way more money. They have us at every turn. They they really do. But what's going to happen is you actually won't be able to see outside of the Hogwarts Express once you're in it. Uh, but th- the windows will be like um, videos. Yeah, they'll be screens. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so what will happen, there's going to be two different journeys depending on if you're traveling to Hogsmeade or London. So you're going to see possibly Dementors, Buckbeak. I want to see Dementors. Yeah, oh, me too. The night bus. I wonder if, if they show a Dementor, like, it'll get cold in the uh, cabin. Oh, you, you know they're, they're going to. They must have to. They have to do that. But you'll see the Weasley twins on brooms, uh, Hagrid on his motorbike, and, quote, unquote, other surprises. What could they be? Tell I us. <laughs> I don't know, but if you want to see a video, go to adventuresbydaddy.com. Oh, and one other more exciting thing that they, I don't think they told us last time, is when you're waiting to board the train in London, you will be able to travel through a brick wall to reach platform nine and three quarters. How are they going to do that? Super cool. Just keep running at a brick wall and sooner or later you'll go right through it? Apparently. We don't know when this is going to open. When we were just there, we talked to a lot of people who they themselves are waiting to hear because first it was going to open in May and then June and July. Uh Uh-oh. So even the people there don't know when it's going to open. But sometime this summer. Well, I would figure when we were riding the the Dueling Dragon coaster, we would see like tracks or something of of the train, but we didn't see that. I think we're going to see Rebels before we see Harry Potter London. (laughs) I guess we'll see. Be the first podcast we had ever been on was a show called Average Intelligence, hosted by Gary Oransky. And now we have an opportunity to have Gary on our show. Gary has certainly upped his game in the fan community as he celebrates his fifth year co-hosting Average Intelligence. Hey, hey, Gary. Hey, Richard. Hey, Sarah. Nice to hear from you guys. Definitely. Nice to hear from you. So tell everyone who doesn't know about Average Intelligence what exactly your show is all about. 
Well, uh, my partner, uh, Nate, and I uh, call ourselves the bastard children of pop culture and mama media. Um, just we've been consumers our entire lives. It's just everything comes and we, we need to see it. We need to experience it. Um, we've both worked multiple years at uh, Toys R Us in Times Square and had incredible opportunities to, you know, be the first to see merchandise and and be part of the premiere events. And it, it got us so excited for all of this stuff, and especially living in New York, having a lot of opportunities of things coming to us that, you know, we're two very opinionated guys, jumped in on the podcasting thing and uh, wanted to be a part of it. And and it was a huge honor to have you guys on, uh, I believe, it about a year and a half ago now? Yeah. Yeah, and we were talking about the Star Wars campaign to bring the Star Wars weekends to Disneyland. Yeah, I, I don't know. The it, it, whole Star Wars Disney thing's never going to be anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you're on the wrong podcast. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there may have been just a rumor. No, you know, <laughs> and it's amazing because you guys were ahead of the curve. Right. You, you, oh. uh, skywalking through Neverland, and I remember uh, on social media when you guys were trying to tweak the title of the show and find exactly what you are. That's right. And it's like, no, that's when I met you guys at Celebration two years ago, and it's Jedi Tink. <laughs> yep. And, and it was that first perfect um, storm of Disney and, and Star Wars together that nobody else thought of, and everywhere we saw you, because uh, my camera crew had were yeah, recording and interviewing people at the time. Yeah, that was an honor to be interviewed, actually. That was exciting. Eventually, it will make see the light of day. <laughs> yeah, I want to see I want to see my interview now. Well, there's you actually became a trilogy on your own because we met you the first day when you were cosplaying uh Gold Bikini Leia. Right. And and then uh we went to the uh competition and and saw you do your routine as Jedi Tank. And everywhere you went when you were in that costume, people were responding. So it was I can only imagine being the person in the costume, but it, it was nice to see you get that reaction and get everyone excited. And especially when you had your job of following you around. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know. were, were you shooting for average intelligence? Well, no, uh, at, it's a project that grew out of uh, just random geekdom. So we, we came up with the idea of fangirl TV okay. uh, for and about, about geek girls, the things they love, the people who love them. And we've been collecting content. Uh, we went to Star Wars Celebration, New York Comic Con. Uh, yeah, at, at Star Wars Celebration, you had teamed up with Kristen Hackett, who yes. is now on Sci-Fi's Fangasm. Now, this Fangirl TV, is this an offshoot of Average Intelligence? Is this a, a different web series? Oh, it's totally different. It's just I, I fell... We are living in a, a great time now for fans because there's so many options to be a creator as well, mm -hmm. where it, where something can move you to create. Everybody we tell about it loves the idea, and hopefully within the next couple of months we're going to have a, a bunch of stuff out of there. Wow. <laughs> so you express your fandom through a podcast and Fangirl TV. I, I try. And yes, it's weird. Two dudes running Fangirl TV, but it, it's out of love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we, we put it out there and we're not trying to hide that we're two men doing it. But we kind of made this oath that, you know, it's always going to be about the women. Where, and if a guy is ever going to be on, it's going to be relevant to their interests. We're going to want, you know, hopefully to get Nathan Fillion Hmm. Or or Benedict Cumberbatch, Dare to Dream, that the fangirls want to see, and not just some randy random chubby dude in a, an ironic T-shirt. Yeah, that's that's great because we this whole podcast of ours came out of wanting to showcase people like you that express their fandoms in all kinds of ways. And I I want to try it all because even my girlfriend also, uh, she went to FIT. She loves fashion. Hmm. Uh, but she's also a giant nerd. And, and she runs a blog on of her own called Fashion Plus Geekery. 
Mm. And it's for the fashion forward fangirl who wants to find the perfect TARDIS blue Prada bag. That's kind of like her tagline. And I'm kind of inspired by her too. And I think um, we've been talking about doing dueling blogs. <laughs> we, we pick a topic and as two different minded fans uh, have conversation, well, do our own run through. No uh, overlapping, but our views on the same topic. So what, what aspects of the pop culture world do you focus on most on average intelligence? I would say the movies. Um, we're, we're, I can't, we're movie geeks. I can't say movie nerds because I, I, I can't go uh, scripture and verse on, you know, the entire works of Sam Rockwell and why he, in Moon this was better. I've seen Moon. I love Moon, but I don't have that kind of catalog mind to hold those details. But I can watch whatever the big blockbuster is of the day. And at what we do on our show is called a spoiler topic discussion. We just dissect it. And I am notorious on our show for having craw moments, which is something that gets stuck in my craw <laughs> that pulls me out of the moment of the movie. And it, it can be something innocuous, but it, I want it, you know, I walk into everything wanting to be the best thing ever. Right. Yeah, it I, seems like the closer you are to the subject matter, like Captain America or even Star Trek, the more of a distance there's going to be between you and the movie because you're going to notice all those little flaws and inconsistencies with the original source material. Oh, completely. And it's one of those things. I, growing up, I had two sets of sheets, Star Wars and Superman. <laughs> and that every night, it was either Star Wars or Superman until probably I was a little too old to have them. I think maybe 14. 24, 25. Oh, 14, yeah. That's a, okay. I will say William Sonoma has lovely Star Wars sheets in there. Kids, set, not William Sonoma, uh, Pottery, uh, Pottery Barn. Pottery Barn, Barn yes, kids. Yes, and we now have them on our bed. Wait, what? No. <laughs> so you only have and a full the pillows. room. I don't think it goes up to Queen. Um, no, yes, it, it does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and we can tell you that for a fact because it's on our bed right now. But they're really nice sets, and mm -hmm. I want them, but my girlfriend told me she'd never get back into the bed. <gasps> what? Oh. She is very fashionable. Well, it, it's, tell her that she's got a choice to make then. <laughs> if only I had the upper hand. <laughs> she has more chips on the table, and even if I go all in, she's still got me beat by... A lot more in the bargaining department. Believe me, I, I know of what you speak. Yeah, so uh, I can live without my Star Wars sheets because I have my two shelves of weird Darth Vader's in my living room. Oh, there you go. She lets them in the living room at least. Well, this this is still my place. Oh, okay. <laughs> the relationship is progressing, and I'm sure when there's you know two names on the lease, it's going to change. Right. I, I might have to have a shelf in a different room somewhere. That time will come <laughs> yeah. for that conversation. But for right now, I do have my Darth Vader made of nothing but nuts and bolts. Awesome. Well, yeah. speaking of collectibles and things, what, what are you looking forward to in pop culture over the next few months? Movies or collectibles or otherwise? Uh, having gone to Toy Fair, um, the only thing that really caught my eye... Um, is in the Black Series for Star Wars. They're finally putting out the Darth Vader in that line, and it's gorgeously detailed. Uh, they have... Um, it's a two-piece helmet and not just one that slides on. Mm. Just everything's detailed and gorgeous. And actually, the entire Black Series, everything that's come out in the six-inch scale is amazing. You are a veteran of conventions and, and fairs. What other different ways have you noticed that people have been expressing their fandom? Celebration being the first specific con convention I went to that was all one fandom expressed in so many different ways. It completely opened my eyes. Like it was the first exposure I had to the 501st and them being so meticulous and having to be on point with every detail and costumes having to be approved by council and it has to be something that they would actually wear. It's like, that's a special kind of love. 
where I need to be authentic to the source material. Mm -hmm. Then I talked to the dented helmet people and there was Boba Fett and she gave me her patch and just that aspect of the culture where it, it, it's something that grew out of the original films and everybody then gets their own patch and they sell them and trade them and whatever they have to do. And it was my favorite keepsake because it was so unique to the event because it's dated and it has her picture sewn on it. But with the dented helmet people, they're a little more casual than the 501st. And they have the, the uh, cross gender cosplaying mm -hmm. and just speaking to all of the different layers, which I think in that weekend we did a hundred interviews, at least 40 of them were gold bikini layers. Goodness. I bet they were. Even the art section, just the people, the paintings and the artist. Um, I'm friends with uh, Katie Cook, who now works on the My Little Pony comic, but she had a mm. booth where she just had all of her Star Wars lithographs. And uh, Scott Blair, who, who does incredible uh, Slave Leia pinup art. And the fact that they had just a tattoo pavilion which it's funny because at one point I was researching doing a, a samurai Darth Vader because I hadn't seen a lot of it. And then I did the research and saw it was all over the place. <laughs> so it, it kept me from getting that tattoo because I had an artist who works the Japanese style and he, he was more gung ho than I was. And it, it was weird, but I, I appreciate the responsibility of getting a tattoo. I know it's a lifelong commitment, even though there are lasers. <laughs> so you have a, a Star Wars tattoo? I I was thinking of getting one. I wanted that uh, Samurai Darth Vader because Darth Vader is my character. <laughs> and I, I was uh, starting to research how to write a long time ago in a galaxy far away in Japanese calligraphy to do the scroll next to him. And I was getting into it, but then I saw it wasn't unique and I... I, I kind of have this thing about not being like everybody else. I was the key audience when Star Wars came out. I, I, it was meant to speak to me. Even if something is put out for the masses, we all have a personal relationship with it, whatever it is. Then we all grow and have our, our likes and our talents and our abilities grow. And some of us might do, you know, a parody of TMZ that is Star Wars centric. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Oh, it's so fantastic. I'll send you a link. <laughs> oh, please, please. Now, Star Wars fandom just blew up this week with the Star Wars Tunisian fan club who did a music video to Pharrell Williams' song, Happy. And this, is this just not the most amazing music video you've ever seen? It benefits from just being such an upbeat song. That and the locations are just beautiful to look at. Yeah, the fact that they used locations from episode one, two, and four, and they did it so, so well. And there's not much said online about who these people are other than they're the Tunisian fan club. I made extra care to look at the credits uh, since I you told me we were going to be talking about it. And it looks like it's the the that they had the uh, Bureau of Tourism involved and getting the rights to be at these sites and everything. and Yeah, they, they used the... I was very happy that they used the Lars homestead from episode two because I was one of the contributors who helped put that homestead back together again after it was just beaten by all the windstorms. It's nice, and that's, you know, the other thing with uh, the social media. Oh, God, I'm so old now. <laughs> I, I just called it the social media. <laughs> So on the Twitters and, and the, the Facetubes. Uh, <laughs> Did your beeper just go off? What's a beeper? <laughs> I, I, it's I, next to your record player. Uh, oh, okay. The beta it's Max. so hard carrying that around and listening to my eight songs all day. <laughs> With, you know, the Kickstarter and the crowdsourcing, we're able to find these causes and, and support them. And... And be a part of them. Yeah, and, and you own it now. You know that you guys helped them rebuild that. It's a pop culture landmark. It's something that spoke to you. They use so many props and costumes, and they got an R2-D2 out there. I don't know 
if there, everyone there was from Tunisia or people just flew from wherever to be in this video. But that was just such a huge expression of fandom. And I'm so glad that it took off like it did. Because like I said, everybody has Star Wars with the um, cartoons. Like there's so much content that's come out in the last 10 years of Star Wars that it, it's constantly updating and, and having opportunity to grow more fans and, and keep that love alive. Yeah, and now we're going on to the fifth generation of Star Wars fans when Rebels comes out this summer. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. And I, I learned some of the Rebel stories at Toy Fair because they tell us about the products and what they're in relation to. And um, I went to a preview event that Hasbro does where they have uh, geek bloggers come so they can post all about all the new toy lines coming out. Mm -hmm. And this is the audience that you have to be extra careful with. <laughs> so they point out that one of the main characters is a, a young Jedi in training, which pissed off the older fans because, you know, the whole basis is that the Jedis were wiped out. There were only two. There was Vader and Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. oh, so well. there shouldn't be other people. Oh, well, this kid, Ezra, he has the force but he doesn't really know what it is he was just born being very force sensitive but he doesn't call it the force he doesn't use it like the force it's just a power that comes to him when he needs it All so right. he was born I, I, into it I'm trying to hold back uh, on getting information so thanks for the spoilers yeah. oh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> well but Gary I think what you were trying to say was they the people Hasbro people were billing it as a young Jedi Yes. Okay. And so then, of course, all the bloggers got up in arms because, eh, well, don't call them that, you know. I think well, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it doesn't fit into what I've known for 20, 30 something years. Yeah. <laughs> there, wait, it's really been that long. <laughs> I, I do love that there's a character that's solely based on Chewbacca's concept art. Mm. Yeah, Zeb. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And it's like, oh, they're, they're doing it. And it's kind of why. When they put out Epic Mickey, I had to buy a Wii to play it because it was all of these long forgotten and discarded concept art from uh, the Disney archives. Right. And it's like I'm that kind of fan where even though if I don't have that direct bond to it, mm -hmm. I'm curious. Yeah, I got Epic Mickey as well. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't finish it. Yeah. And <laughs> never bought Epic Mickey 2. Yeah, did I? I can't remember now. I'm so like out of gaming since we do this podcast. It basically sucks up all of our time. <laughs> but I mean, I, I love having an outlet as a podcaster. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it's like people said about, I've seen a lot about Twitter, where these are all the random thoughts we all had and never had a place just to put that one thought and send it out there. This is what we, we would all be muttering on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good way to put that. Yeah, and now I, you know, in five years, I've given myself a, a long-form outlet. Uh, I mean, with minimal promotion, mostly word of mouth and through our friends. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens on iTunes, God knows, I don't understand. <laughs> but in our 250 episodes, we have over 80,000 uh, listens. Oh, Nice. And it's like, I don't know how, I don't know why, but thank you. And it means my opinion's getting out there. And there's probably people who agree with me. There's probably more that think I'm a rambling idiot. But it, it makes me feel like my opinion has merit. Right. And, and it, it's fun, isn't it? And plus, like, I've seen you guys interview the voice of Tinkerbell or the inspiration for Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were just getting all these opportunities without a podcast. So... Uh, we were just bursting with ideas and things to share. And people were meeting that we wanted to share. With, they were telling us information that we wanted to share with other people. So after seeing what you were doing and what other people were doing, we just really wanted to get a podcast, as you said, for that outlet, just to share, share with the whole fan community. And it's just been amazing. Through my winning personality on Twitter, uh, I became friends with somebody in Read Pop mm. that 
um, just liked my sense of humor and would retweet my things and struck up a friendship and was able to get me the press credentials to Celebration and, and just have met other bloggers and, and people at Toy Fair and other things and we bring them into the fold and, and it, it's interesting being a creator. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and, interesting what Twitter can do as well is connecting you with people. Oh, yeah. It's and, crazy. you know, I, I kind of like being your podfather. I, I like that, you know, by coming on my show, it inspired you guys. And it's so random that people I spoke to maybe 20 minutes total at some convention two years ago, I consider friends and and come on their show. They come on mine. And, and everyone just wants to help each other and talk to each other and be friends with each other. Mm-hmm. Well, mm, to a point. I, I've spent the better part of 20 years online on message boards from everything from professional wrestling to satellite radio shows. Not all of them are so supportive. That's why when you find the ones that are, it's something special. We did a lot of research when we were doing, when we were starting Skywalking Through Neverland, and we found some podcasts that we really liked, and we reached out to these people, like Scott Murray from Assembly of Geeks, and, and you, and everyone was just so so eager to help each other. I know that the only thing that, it, with a podcast, we all share the same information and the same source material that it, it's growing from. Mm-hmm. What makes it unique are our personalities and, and our opinions. And, you know, I'm a lifelong New Yorker. I don't have a lot of couth. <laughs> I, I get my opinions. They need to be said. <laughs> um, I might not be the most eloquent person. I can turn a phrase. I've used the word vestibule in my life. <laughs> um, uh, I know what that is. Uh, yeah. But I grew up Catholic. Oh, okay. So, you know, even though we're all working off the same thing, because... You know, uh, we're me and my partner are both huge Star Wars fans. Mm-hmm. He is a Disney fanatic. He's gone to multiple parks every year for years that I've known him. He's a little bit spoiled. Mm-hmm. But he knows it, it's his love. And his opinions would be completely different than yours, guys. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, Richard, you're, you've been working in film Sarah, you do the cosplay and, and you also work with Richard and it's stuff that we can't give. I've never dressed up in public since I had my um, Dukes of Hazard costume when I was eight that came out of the box. That was you just the plastic Duke, smock in the... I had the Luke Duke. There you go. I know my Dukes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, it's, it sounds like you got a, lots and lots of opinions to share. Now, if anyone wants to find you, where, where would they go? Uh, if you search... Average Intelligence on iTunes. It's the only thing that comes up. Also, uh, the website, averageintelligencepod.com. And, you know, since I brought it up so much, I am at Gary underscore O on Twitter. And how often do you have a show? Uh, We do it once a week unless something comes up. Uh, We do them live Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, We have a chat room that's live when the show's going on. People can call in. Uh... We, we tend not to have a lot of live listens. We're more archival, but if you're there and we're happy to have anybody on that has an opinion about anything geeky, uh, they can email me at info at averageintelligencepod.com. I, I want everybody on. I had like five people from Star Wars Celebration that I met on, so it's the more the merrier. Because the, the more each of us grow as a community and we come together, the bigger it always gets and the more opportunities it gives us all. Oh, nicely said. I can't wait until we've hit our five-year five year mark <laughs> or our five-month mark. That'll be after like three Star Wars movies. It's crazy. Well, you guys, um, you're picking the perfect time. You were, Like I said before, you were ahead of the curve. You are going to have a lot of opportunities, I think, especially being in California. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure if you get the opportunity to go to Skywalker Ranch on an invite, you'll drive all night to get there. <laughs> yeah, actually, we've been there twice. Ah, oh, just rubbing it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we kind of did that. <laughs> he got the call. Um, yeah, I work here. You want to? We got a friend it? who was working on Star Wars detours, and he said, "Rich, if you want to come to Skywalker, and we were out the door." <laughs> 
I'm not sure if I want to be adopted by you guys <laughs> or just move out there so I could just ride your coattails. <laughs> Everything well, happens in L.A. Yeah, but pizza and bagels. <laughs> There's pizza and bagels here. We have here. Taco Bell and, and Del Taco. <laughs> Actually, we have very healthy food. Lots of salad and fresh, fresh veggies and fruit. And Del you're, Taco. You're, you're still not selling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Disneyland... And Rancho Obi Wan and Skywalker Ranch. All right, that that that's a little more my style. <laughs> Gary, once again, congratulations on five years of an amazing show, and we do look forward to talking to you in the future. Me as well, guys. Love you both. Love yeah, you sir. too. Big hugs. You're amazing people. On that note, you enjoy the rest of your night, and we look forward to talking to you again. Hey, before we go on with the show, we just want to thank you once again for coming back to Skywalking Through Neverland. We are here for you, the fans. We are the ultimate expression of pop culture fandom. Because that's what we showcase. Either what people have done with their fandom, or we talk to those who are involved firsthand in the universes that we all love. Thank you everyone who has given us their iTunes and Stitcher reviews. And once again, oh, please just go on iTunes even if you don't have time to write us a little paragraph, just click on the five-star button. That's all you need to do. And it'll give us an extra five stars. And boost that, us up on that list yeah. of Star Wars Disney podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. Back when I was going to elementary school in the late 70s, early 80s, <laughs> My teacher, Mrs. Patterson, would make everyone write in their journals. Most kids hated to write in their journals, but for some reason, I've always loved writing, and I've always written in my journals, and I've always been a pack rat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These three things combined to bring you Richard Woloski's journal entries. March 14th, 1978. Me and my friend Jimmy saw close encounters. I like when it... A kid was in bed. All his toys with batteries started to go. Then, then he went outside. He went in the streets. A truck was coming. He almost got ran over. His mother grabbed him. The guy stopped. Then UFOs were coming. The police were after the UFOs. A little while back, we had held this ultimate Disney trivia challenge extravaganza. We had pulled together some of the fans we had met while at Kamikaze and other conventions, and we had this big roundtable trivia challenge. Now, in this roundtable of trivia experts, we had Angie Viper, cosplay extraordinaire, and her friends, Sean, York, Alex, John, and Alou. Yeah, it's actually John York, who is a cosplay photographer, and um, he took some cool pictures of me as Jedi Tink on Facebook. So you can test your knowledge up against these Disney experts. Welcome to Skywalking Through Neverland's Disney Challenge. Woo! Woo! Which category would you like? Who am I? Villains? Who's your daddy? Fear Factor? Princess Connections? Fill in the song? Easter Eggs. All right, John. What would you like? Um. Fear factor. Fear factor. Nice. In Hercules, what does Megara have a terrible fear of? when you sing that. <laughs> um, I'm going to do... Who's your daddy? Yeah. Who is your daddy? Well, that was a good question. In ABC's Once Upon a Time, but, Mulan oh, has goodness. fallen in love with Aurora. So, Aurora, who's your daddy? <laughs> Does she have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> was that Trick introduced on the show? Yes. 
When? <laughs> it was yeah. a trick question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, it's calm Wait. down. <laughs> Angie. You didn't say His name. Oh, fudge sickles. Wait, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, give me multiple choice. Okay. Wait, I, I know what it is. We have either King Stefan, King oh! David, King <laughs> Randolph, or King Herman. Ooh, Angie. What she thinks it is. It's right. King Stefan. Yeah. And Angie gets another point. Yay! 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 All right, three way well, Angie got that one correct, so she's got to give us her ATM card number. <gasps> no. <laughs> that never works. What would you like? Um, I want villains. Oh. With transformation powers and a raven for a pet, I doom a princess to death before the sun sets. Who am I? Okay. Fudge! I just looked at it this morning. Okay. Okay. Give us the answer, then spell it backwards. I have to say it backwards. No, just say the answer. Maleficent. Uh huh. T N E C. I know. I. <laughs> F. I. L A M. I'm sorry. What was the other letter? After the F. A. I'm sorry. What? E. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been my point. L A M. And Sean gets the point. Yeah, 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 you're very lenient on him. I know. For a name I still can't pronounce backwards. Maleficent. 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 You meant forwards. Melissa. 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 Okay. <laughs> I can say it backwards. I just can't say it forwards. Maleficent. Now, now can you Fell can you say up. it backwards? Okay. Yes, I can. <laughs> Man, I just did it. <laughs> To neck flam. <laughs> oh, the neck flam. <laughs> no, we, could, we couldn't debate that one if we tried. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded so good. Oh, neck flam. All right, Sean, get the points. I did. All right, Sean, go ahead. I'm gonna go with Fear Factor. Right <gasps> Thank you, Joe Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Which Disney character is not afraid of alligators? but is afraid of crocodiles. I heard so Captain Hook. Captain, Captain Hook is correct! I was like, the princess and the frog? <laughs> that music is so awesome. Just brings me right back to the Death Star Trench. And that also means it's time for the countdown. Yes, countdown to Celebration Anaheim in 2015. April 16th through the 19th at the Anaheim Convention Center. <gasps> and it's March right now, isn't it? We already have our tickets. Of course. As of this show airing date, March 17th, there are 393 days until day one of Celebration Anaheim 2015, but that doesn't mean that's when all the festivities will begin because we're hoping many of you will be here beforehand so we can all get together for meetups and, and have a great time. Yay. Since Sarah and I know the ins and outs of Disneyland, we're, we're happy to take anyone through the parks, through the by roads and the back ways. Yeah, we'll take anyone through the parks, but just not on convention days. Yeah, no, not going to happen. <laughs> In these last couple of episodes, I've played clips from Star Wars Celebration Zero, which is the 10th anniversary convention where George Lucas made his very first convention appearance. So we're going to play some more from George Lucas's Q&A. And the questions are kind of hard to hear because it's in a very big banquet room. And this is on one of these 1980s video cameras, so the microphone only picked up so much. So we'll, we'll stop and start and repeat the questions as we go. The first question is, will you ever direct again? Yes, uh, probably someday in the future. This next question someone asks, will, will we ever find out how the Jedi came about? It's referred to, but they came about considerably before the first 
three chapters. We'll get, we'll get more. Uh, get more information about them. That's all right. <laughs> Way in the back, the yellow. So this next guy asks George, "Would you ever have Spielberg direct a Star Wars movie?" Now back then, the Lucas and Spielberg thing was just as big as a rivalry as Star Wars versus Star Trek. Really? Yeah, because whose movie's gonna top Star Wars or E.T. And a lot of Star Wars fans felt like E.T. was just too mushy and gushy, and no one ever wanted to hear that Spielberg was gonna direct a Star Wars movie. Really? It would. Yeah. See, I thought, uh, to me, growing up, I always equated Lucas and Spielberg because they had made Indiana Jones together, and I thought, well, that's awesome. So, I just, I like them both equally. Well, it was back then where if anyone competed with Star Wars, they were public enemy number one. Uh, we've discussed it, but um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I think he knows that. So now jumping ahead 25 years to when they were trying to decide who was going to direct the next Star Wars, for me, Spielberg was on top. Mm. He was on the, on the top of the list. This next question comes from a guy, his name was Arlen Miller. Now I recall this guy because he'd been talking the whole convention about this new thing he had just discovered in the soundtrack for Return of the Jedi. When the Emperor is zapping Luke, he convinced everyone that buried in the soundtrack was a voice saying, Use the Force, Luke. Now go ahead and listen to it right here. Sarah, did you hear it? Maybe? You can hear a little bump a dum bump mm -hmm. And he could have sworn that was Anakin saying, Use the Force, Luke. Now I've heard it a million times and I still don't hear it. Hmm. But this is what he asks George. Yes, sir. Right there. What is the story where are you aware at the end of Jedi, or towards the end of Jedi, that the Emperor is lashing out the lightning bolts at Luke? With trapped or hidden within the soundtrack, there's a voice that says, Use the Force, Luke. Yes or no? Are you aware of that? <laughs> Only Ben Burton knows for sure. <laughs> That's funny. He's, he's saying, What are you talking about? <laughs> So this next question was a favorite. Will you ever release the Wookiee TV movie on VHS or videotape? Wookiee TV movie? The Wookiee TV movie. Is that the Star Wars holiday special? <laughs> yes, this is the special that George always said, if I could, I would go around to everyone's home with a sledgehammer and break these tapes. Aww. But now, listen to hear what he says. Yeah. 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 Um, I believe it will be released on videotape. And, uh, I'm not sure whether they're going to free on the <laughs> So this is much different than what we've been hearing all along. He says that they may release it on videotape, or he's not sure if they're going to rerun it. Maybe he didn't realize she was talking about the Star Wars <laughs> holiday special. <laughs> yeah, he had just come off of a flight. He, he was shooting Willow at this time, so he had severe jet lag. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. So this lady asks, is the pre-production for Star Wars Episode One, beginning January of 1988. <laughs> Boy, are you off by six, seven years. Not too far off. Uh, that is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy asks, will you have any more involvement with Disneyland? Because he heard that there was going to be an Indiana Jones ride coming soon. <laughs> The Indiana Jones Adventure at Disneyland opened in 95. So where did this guy hear this information? He's, he's eight years ahead of his time. Uh, I'd like to do more with Disney. And uh, hopefully that's not possible. Uh, and there is a possibility of an of a Indiana Jones right there. Right. Everyone's clapping because George Lucas wants to mo do more with Disney. <laughs> that's fun. And that's kind of a premonition of things to come. 25 years later, George. 25 years later. Meh. So this gentleman is very timely. He asks George about Willow. Well, um, Willow. Willow is a fantasy. It's not a space fantasy, but it's a more straightforward fantasy. Uh, it's uh, the most exciting thing I've really been involved with since Raiders. 
It's the first thing I've actually created since Raiders. And um, I must say it's going extremely well. We're about five weeks into shooting. And uh, I think it's going to be a very exciting picture. It's uh, in a genre that uh, has had hard times. Industry generally uh, feels it's a dead genre like Western. But uh, I believe fantasy can live, and uh, we're trying to prove it. So this guy asks, will you ever put out a movie just about the Jedi? <laughs> Interesting. Call the prequels. Yeah. No. <laughs> so basically he's looking for more information on the Jedis so the Jedis will have more information to go off of. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> this is kind of like Mystery Science Theater. It, yeah, a little bit. So this young buckaroo asks, do you have any advice for young filmmakers? Was that you? That, that wasn't me, but you may hear me on the next installment. Ooh. Because I was right there. <laughs> yeah. Persevere. <laughs> Work very hard. And uh, always do the best at whatever you do, no matter how lowly the job seems. Now this next guy asks, will we ever see more of Boba Fett? And why did you kill him off so early? Well, the EU took care of that. As did episode two. Um, it was just about the story dictated. You know, sometimes you don't have control of these things. You start to sit down to write, and they just sort of take on their own life. <laughs> and there you have it. Now his, his answers were very short, but not only did he have jet lag, but that's just the way George is. Yeah, I thought they were informative, though. It's very fun to hear his answers Versus the way things really turned out. Yes. Because he, this is 87, he had no idea what was going on. He hadn't, he hadn't a clue. Yeah, yeah. Now, is there a place where uh, our listeners can hear this whole interview? Yeah, I'm sure at, when we're done listening to this whole thing, I think it's about an hour, we can put it on, on our website and on Facebook in its entirety. As bonus content? Just like the Clone Wars. <laughs> So we're not going to put it on yet, but look for it when we're done going through a few of the questions. Yeah, this really is some rare stuff. I've looked online. I've looked on YouTube. I haven't seen anyone else post this. So it's an exclusive from Skywalking Through Neverland. Exclusives. <laughs> that was from your video. That was from my video, Slave Leia Goes to the Party. <laughs> now moving right along to... What everyone was asking about, Star Wars Episode 7. When were they? Oh, yes. What everyone was asking about in the clip. Yeah. Have you had told those people that there will be an Episode 7? At that point, we didn't know much about Episode 1. At that point, how many days away was Episode 7? <laughs> 3,721. Oh, more than that. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, more than that. If someone had asked George, how many more days until Star Wars Episode 7? Do you know what he would have said? Give me a moment. The answer is 10,220. Then he would have thanked Siri. And everyone would, have, everyone would have said, who's Siri? And he would have said, never mind. You'll know soon enough in about 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, for Star Wars Weekends, uh, until the first day of Star Wars Weekends, there are 62 days. As of Monday, March the 17th. Now, like we said at the top of the show, there is some... Recent news about Star Wars weekends, for better or for worse. Now, this almost feels like Order 67. First, the Emperor wiped away all the Jedis. Now, Disney's kind of wiping away a lot of what we know or did know about what was coming for Star Wars. First, there was the 3D movies, then detours, then some of the video games. Once again... Going to further their Order 67. That's just what I'm calling it. <laughs> They're excluding all EU characters from their motorcade parade. Oh no, at Star Wars weekends? Yes, yeah, so whereas before you would have all the Darths being represented, you would have Mara Jade. Now you can't have any of that because Disney is putting the kibosh on Expanded Universe. Oh. But now, according to this article from TashiStation.net, um, Starkiller is still allowed. Darth Revan and Starkiller are still allowed to march in the parade. 
hmm. but the majority have been prohibited. And w- I think mostly it's the post Return of the Jedi characters. Oh, since they're going to be dealing with post Return of the Jedi stories, it makes sense. Hmm. And I hear there's some new standards that they're imposing as well. Yeah, Jawas must be under five feet tall. Oh man, <laughs> I couldn't be a Jawa. Me neither. And. And Jedi robes must be standard issued colors. What the heck does that mean? It means you can have brown, dark brown, light brown, tan? an umber brown. Not tan. No, 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 no. Tan. No? What do you you would be ousted from Disney if you walked in if you walked in with a tan robe. Does that mean I can't be Jedi Tink? That means you cannot be Jedi Tink. Mm. <laughs> I know, and I'm sorry. I'm sad. When we're there on Memorial Day, we'll hold up big signs. Don't exclude the EU. Yeah. So take that. <laughs> so honestly, I didn't even know that fans or the 501st were allowed to march in this parade. Yeah, me either. I guess if you're dressed well enough or something. If you're representing. Or maybe it's through 501st or the the Rebel Alliance. Yeah. There was one girl who was putting together her own Mara Jade costume especially for the parade, and she was given this bit of news, and she was not happy. I'm sure. There's always celebration in Anaheim. Yes. But the other events in Star Wars Weekends, I'm sure, are going to be awesome. And if you want to attend them and you need someone to help with your travel plans, you can always contact Autumn Barnes. She is our official Skywalking Through Neverland Mickey Vacation Travel Specialist. Autumn Barnes is a veteran Star Wars weekender and can help you with all aspects of your Disney trip, including the selection of your resort. Uh, She'll monitor the pricing, so if the price drops between now and then, she'll give you the lower price. And she books all the dining reservations for you, makes all the plans. It's very helpful when you've got a lot to do and you don't have time to plan your vacation. Yeah, it's really like spinning a lot of plates. Worrying yes. about reservations, worrying about fast passes, yeah. worrying about what you're going to see at the park, what's open, what's closed. Yeah, plus, I mean, there's so much to know about the Disney World resorts you, you can't possibly know in one trip. So she'll give you that jump ahead so that you can maximize your trip. Because if you don't plan ahead or have someone plan ahead for you, you're going to miss out on so much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So contact her to book your Star Wars Weekend's Disney Resort stay today at MyMickeyVacationTravel.com And mention Skywalking Through Neverland for a special spring travel deal. Well, that wraps up episode number 22 of Skywalking Skywalking Through Through Neverland. Neverland. Next podcast, it's Tiki Cantina all the way. When we're going to be talking to Stephen Sansweet. Ooh. Yeah, we got lots of questions to ask him and we want to see how his eBay auctions are going. He's got Dave Filoni's hat up there. Dave Dave Filoni's hat? What? Why did Dave his, Filoni give up his hat? His autographed hat. Wow. I hope Dave Filoni got another hat. I guess that hat was associated with the Clone Wars. Now with the Rebels coming, going for a whole new look. Oh. This time, he's going to wear a Mike Nesmith knit hat. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about that. That's your thing. That's your groove, Richard. You know, hey, hey, we're all the monkeys. So if you've really liked this episode, please go to iTunes and click on that five-star button. That's all you have to do. And if you really liked us, just write us a couple sentences about how much you like the show. And we want to thank everyone for writing in and giving us all your feedback, telling us what you really like and things you weren't too crazy about. I know we're, we got a Star Wars and Disney podcast, so some might not be crazy about some segments and, and vice versa. Yeah, we'd like to know those things. You can hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash skywalkingthroughneverland. Or if you don't want everyone to quite read it, please send us emails, share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. The last thing we want to do is to do a podcast in a vacuum. We really want to hear what your feedback is and what's working for you. Yes, and if you prefer to share with us your thoughts in 140 characters, you can always contact us on Twitter at skywalkingpod. And once again, we're going to leave you with Sam Shazam dancing with an Ewok hood. And remember, never land on Alderaan.
Thank you for listening to Skywalking Through Neverland. All material submitted becomes the property of Skywalking Through Neverland and are subject for use on our show. You can help support Skywalking Through Neverland by posting about us on Facebook, Twitter, or just tell another fanboy or girl. We would also really appreciate a five-star review on iTunes. A link to our iTunes page can be found on skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Skywalking Through Neverland was created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Segment producers are David Scale, Richard Woloski, Sarah Woloski, and Mark Agushowitz. Graphic design and website design by Sarah Woloski. Technical advisor is Peter Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is not affiliated with Lucasfilm Limited, Disneyland Resorts, or the Walt Disney Company. All names, sounds, and related items of Star Wars and Disney are registered, trademarked, and copyright Lucasfilm Limited and the Walt Disney Company and their respective trademark and copyright holders, all rights reserved. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Hey Hey Entertainment, copyright 2013, all rights reserved. No part of this show may be repurposed, reproduced, redistributed, or rebroadcasted without the written permission of Hey Hey Entertainment. Sorry, all that had to be said. Goodbye. Live long and prosper. Wait, sorry. May the force be with you. And cut. That's a wrap.